Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses the section of the book titled Bases. Let's begin with a reminder of some notation. Recall that F denotes either the field R of real numbers or the field C of complex numbers. Also, V always denotes a vector space over F. We now introduce a new vector space, which will be useful for future examples. For a non-negative integer m, let p sub m of f denote the set of polynomials with coefficients in f and degree at most m. Let's look at some examples. Our first polynomial is 2x cubed minus 7x plus 5. This polynomial has real coefficients and it has degree 3, thus it is in p sub 3 of r. This polynomial is also in p sub 5 of r because it has degree less than or equal to 5. As another example, let's look at this polynomial. 3 plus 2i times z squared plus 4i times z plus 9. This is a polynomial with complex coefficients. It has degree 2. Thus it is in p 20 of c because it has degree less than or equal to 20. Often, for the variable, we use x when dealing with real numbers and z when dealing with complex numbers, but this is not a hard and fast rule. Any variable can be used, including z for real numbers and x for complex numbers. Now we come to one of the crucial definitions in linear algebra. A basis of a vector space is a list of vectors in that vector space that is linearly independent and spans the vector space. Thus, there are two conditions. The list must be linearly independent, and it must span the vector space. Let's look at some examples of bases. We'll start off with Fn, and then we have the list of n vectors, each one of them an element of Fn. First vector is 1, followed by all zeros. The second vector is 0, 1, then all zeros, and so on, up until the last vector, which is n minus 1 zeros, followed by a 1. This is the basis of Fn as is easy to verify, be sure you think about it. This is called the standard basis of Fn. Let's look at another example. Here we consider the subspace of F3 consisting of those vectors whose first two coordinates are equal to each other. The claim is that the list 1, 1, 0, and then the second vector 0, 0, 1 is a basis of this vector space. The reason for that is that this list is easily seen to be linearly independent. Furthermore, if x, x, y is in our vector space, then x, x, y equals x times the first vector plus y times the second vector in this list, showing that the list spans our vector space. Because the list spans the vector space and is linearly independent, it is a basis. Here's another example, now in F2. We consider the list 1, 2 for our first vector and 3, 5 for our second vector. This list of two vectors is linearly independent because neither vector is a scalar multiple of the other vector. Remember that that trick for showing linearly independence only works with lists of length 2. It's also easy to see that this list spans F2. Because the list is linearly independent and spans F2, it is a basis of F2. Here's another example. We now consider the subspace of F3 consisting of those vectors whose three coordinates add up to zero. The list of two vectors shown here is a basis for this subspace of F3. The reason for that again is that these vectors are linearly independent and they span the space as we'll see later. Our final example is in p sub m of f. So here m is a non-negative integer, um, and we look at the polynomials 1, z, up to zm. They obviously are a basis of fm because first they're linearly independent, and second their span is equal to pm. In fact, the definition of p sub m of f is the span of those vectors. Notice that in this case each of our vectors is actually a function, not a list of n numbers. Often when trying to understand a new definition, it's useful to see some non-examples as well as some examples. Thus, let's look at some non-examples of bases. Our first non-example is the list shown here of two vectors in F3. 
This list is linearly independent. Again, we can check easily that neither of these vectors is a scalar multiple of the other vector, but it does not span F3. Thus, this list is not a basis of F3. Again, reminder, to be a basis, the list needs to be linearly independent, and it needs to span the vector space in question. Our sec second example is this list of three vectors in F2. This list does span F2, but it is not a basis of F2 because it is not linearly independent. I'll let you think about why. The next result shows why bases are so important. Here's the result. A list of vectors in V is a basis if and only if every vector in V can uniquely be written as a linear combination of those vectors. Let's look at an example. Let V be the vector space we encountered earlier, namely the subspace of F3 consisting of those vectors whose three coordinates add up to zero. We claim that the list 1, comma, minus 1, comma, 0, first vector, and then the second vector is 1, comma, 0, comma, minus 1, is a basis of V. Let's think about why. First, this list is indeed linearly independent, because being a list of length 2, we can easily see that neither vector is a scalar multiple of the other vector. Now what about the condition that this list span our vector space V? That also is true, and here's why. If we take any vector x, y, z in V, then we can write x, y, z as the following linear combination of our two vectors. We take minus y times the first vector plus minus z times the second vector. Let's see why that works. Let's start with the third coordinate, so we'll work in from the end. Um, the third coordinate on the right side is clearly z matching the third coordinate on the left side. Okay, now let's look at the second coordinate. Again, we see easily that the second coordinate on the right side, after we do the scalar multiplication and the addition, is equal to y, matching the second coordinate on the left side. Okay, what about the crucial first coordinate? On the left side of the equation, we see the first coordinate is x, and on the right side, the first coordinate is minus y minus z. But that is equal to x, because if we look at the equation x plus y plus z equals 0, which defines v, we see that x is indeed equal to minus y minus z. Thus, this list of two vectors spans v, and hence, being linearly independent, it is a basis of v. Now we come to three really important results. Our first result states that if we have a spanning list in a vector space, then we can throw away some of those vectors in that spanning list so that what's left is a basis of the vector space. You should be sure to look at the proof in the book of this theorem. It's a really nice application of the linear dependence lemma. Our second important result states that every finite dimensional vector space has a basis. Let's think about this for a second. The definition of a finite dimensional vector space is a vector space that has a list, meaning, of course, a finite list that spans the vector space. So a, a vector space is finite dimensional if it has a spanning list. Then the first theorem shown here shows that we can throw away some vectors in that spanning list and get a basis. That's the proof that every finite dimensional vector space has a basis. Now we come to the third important result in this video. This result says that if we're working in a finite dimensional vector space and we have a linearly independent list of vectors in that vector space, then we can add some more vectors to that list so that we end up with a basis. Be sure to read the proof in the book of this interesting and important theorem. This concludes the video on bases.